Welcome to this series where we're going to take a look at the view router package and in particular we'll take a look at how to add the router and make use of it using view version 3. If you've never used a router before in any other frameworks or libraries it's basically a package which we can use to switch between pages of views. So why do we need a package to do this in the first place? Well generally when building applications or websites with Vue.js we're building something called a single page application. A single page application can sound pretty deceptive. It doesn't mean our website is only one single page. What it means is behind the scenes when we first visit a website or app, one single JavaScript file is generally downloaded. So this is one big bundle of JavaScript which comes from the server. And then on the front end, we need to handle how we need to switch between various pages or components in this bundle. Using more traditional based web technologies such as PHP or Ruby on Rails, what we generally do when clicking on different pages or navigation links, this will request a new page from the server, but with single page applications we already have all of the JavaScript bundled on the first request, so we need to switch between these various parts. When dealing with a router package such as the view router, it's not just about switching between pages though. There are generally a lot more features which we can discover too. And we'll see a lot of these throughout this series. The view router package is also officially supported and maintained by the core Vue.js team. So it's deeply integrated, supported and kept up to date. If you want to keep things really simple, there is also a CDN link which you can use for the view router. But for this demonstration, I'm going to make use of a build tool and we'll make use of the Vite package. So Vite is effectively going to allow us to scaffold or create a new Vue.js application and it will give us lots of nice features such as hot module replacement which will automatically update the browser each time we make changes to our project. So without any further talking we'll get on with creating a new project and for this I'm going to make use of Visual Studio Code and jump into the terminal which is built in. Here we can see on the Vue.js documentation to create a new view application we need to use npm init view at latest. So you must make sure that you have the latest or a current version of node.js installed. You can test this by typing npm v for version. Mine's currently on version 8. And then we can use the cd command to change into any directory which you want to move to. In my case, I'm going to change into the desktop to install this project, and then we can run the init command. So this is npm init view at latest. The convenient thing about creating a new view free project is we can also install the view router package at this stage. If we need to install any additional packages, that's fine. The project name. Just say view router. A TypeScript, no, we don't need JSX. We can add the view router because that's the purpose of the series. We don't need any state management or testing. Okay, and let's open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. Drag this in. You may also need to reopen the terminal. And from here, just before we move on any further, we need to run npm i for install to install all the node packages which we need. Okay, the last step which we need is npm run dev to run our development server so we can see our project inside the browser. Copy this link or command and control click to open this up. And we've now successfully created a new view free project. One of the things which you will instantly notice if you installed the view router at this stage is we have two links to switch between. We have the home link and also the about page. So we have some kind of routing functionality out of the box, but we also need to add our own routes and our own features too. So let's take a look behind the scenes and see how this happens. If we go into the source folder, in the router folder, we have this index.js. 
You'll see at the very top of this file, we already have the view router package installed since we added this when we set up the project. And this is importing two things from this package. The first one is create router, which you can see just here. And this creates a new router object with all of our routes and configuration. You can see inside, we can choose between history or we can also set up hash mode. And we'll take a look at this later. But probably the time where you'll spend most of the work with the router is inside of this route array. If we take a look inside of here, each one of our routes is set up as an object. For the most simple one here, we set up a file path and this is just the home directory. So this is the one we see when we simply go to our project URL. This is a name or an alias which we give to each one of these routes and we can reference these later when we set up our links. A component, which we want to display when we are on this page, we've imported something called the home view. We can see at the top, this home view is pulled in from the views folder. Let's take a look at the sidebar. Open up the views and we have our home and our about view. If we open up any of these two router views, inside of here will look pretty familiar if you've done any work with Vue.js in the past. And these are set up exactly the same as a regular Vue.js component. We have the template, which adds our HTML code to the page. We can have an optional style section, and also we can have a script section too. So these look exactly the same as our components, which we can see here. The only difference in terms of structure is we are organizing these into a views folder. So we know which ones we need to switch between with the router. So just to clarify, a component can be any single piece or any single section of our page, but we make sure that our views folder contains the routes which we want to switch between with the router. Back to the router index page. We can scroll down and see our second router object. This has the path of forward slash about, and we can also type this in. It's enter, and we then take into the about us page. This also has a router name, but the difference between our two routes here is the first one directly reference to components. And this second one is doing something called an import. As we can see here, we have some comments above, and this is telling us that rather than directly importing our components and including this with the rest of the package, we are segregating our about us view so we can make use of something called lazy loading. And this is one of the other features of the view router package. It's also capable of this lazy loading. So as mentioned before, when we first visit a single page application and type in the URL, this will download the full JavaScript bundle from the server. However, though, sometimes we don't want this big bundle. It could be a really big application. So what we can do rather than having one single JavaScript file is we can split these into separate files. This is what's happened here. We've segregated the about view into a separate file. And this is only downloaded from the server when we click on the about link. If you wanted to, we could also change this to be a regular component, just like above. Let's say about view. And we would also need to import this just like above. So we'll import the about view. This is alongside the home view. So we just need to change the name. Save this. Vite will automatically refresh the page. And we can still switch between these two routes. Finally, we need to include this router inside of our view package. So we export this at the bottom and then into the main.js file. This exported router file is then imported into our main JavaScript file. The rest is regular Vue.js. We create a new Vue.js application, which is stored inside of app. And then we can add this router package to our application before it's then mounted to the DOM.